This video is of course going to contain nothing but spoilers. I'm literally going to cover the entire climax of this movie. So if you're a fan and you have not seen the third movie, get the hell out of here and go watch it. If you aren't a fan, then what is wrong with you? How can you not be a fan? I know I'm not supposed to judge, but seriously. So with that aside, the warnings have been given out and the spoilers start literally right now. As I'm sure you've noticed if you've watched any movies ever, the vast majority of scenes that make us cry tend to involve character deaths. How to Train Your Dragon 3, on the other hand, completely avoided character deaths, and yet still, tons of people left the theater in complete tears. So I wanted to analyze how they managed to do that. So now that I have the spoilers out of the way, and hopefully anyone who doesn't want to be spoiled has left the video, we can get into the actual meat of things. For this video, I'm going to be discussing the story-based aspects of how the writer of How to Train Your Dragon managed to make us cry without killing characters. But first, an honorable mention to the incredible team behind visuals and sound design. The screenplay might have brought Steven Spielberg to tears, but with bad animation and bad music pairing, we could have easily not felt the effects of the story. Instead, the amazing visuals and perfectly paired music helped really drive these story elements home. So massive applause for the whole How to Train Your Dragon team. And seriously guys, have you ever seen better sand than this? The ending scenes might have made my eyes wet, but this sand made my... Now to the story elements. There was an abundance of emotional scenes and tender moments, but in this video, I'm going to be covering the three scenes that brought tears spilling down my own cheeks. And diving right into it, let's start with scene number one, the sacrifice. A large part of what makes an audience cry is in overwhelming them with emotions and tension. This scene played on that perfectly. This is the culmination of the climax. We're on the edge of our seat, our hearts are in our throats, we know there's a chance a character could die, and possible endings are flashing through our minds. We're facing the fear that we could lose one of our most beloved characters, but also the fear that one of our most beloved characters could lose a companion. And then this scene happens. Toothless! Save him. So what else do we have at play here to tug at our heartstrings? Well, from the very get-go, we have a strong component of loyalty and teamwork. The villain says something along the lines of, let's see who he follows, referring to Toothless when he takes the Light Fury. But when Hiccup releases Toothless, he flies out of the water with Hiccup, and then Hiccup gives us the line, let's go get her. So Toothless isn't forced to choose who to follow, Hiccup and him tackle the problem as a team. Then of course we get a short flying sequence to get our adrenaline going, because nothing makes us want to live in the world of How to Train Your Dragon more than one of their flight sequences. So the chase continues, Toothless uses his trick the Light Fury taught him to get rid of the other dragons, and then in a true display of the overall theme of the movie, we get this moment where Hiccup literally flies on his own. The next emotional layer we see playing out is reconciliation. Hiccup wasn't entirely on board with the Light Fury, and they've had some rough patches. But in this fleeting moment, so much passes between them. In letting go and telling her to save Toothless, he shows that he trusts her to save him, and that his love for Toothless is strong enough that he'll give up his life for him. This carries a lot of meaning to her, a more wild dragon who doesn't yet understand the dragon to human bond. Then we get the other side of this reconciliation when she comes back and catches him, which culminates in a beautiful parallel to add emotional depth. In this incredibly clever bit, we see the Light Fairy catch Hiccup in a way that's almost an exact parallel to the scene in the first movie where Toothless catches Astrid. I don't have a clip of this section of the hidden world because it turns out they don't tend to share clips that include spoilers, which made making this video way more complicated than it had to be. But the shots in the scene match up so well that it's very clear they did it intentionally. And this works so well to bring the tears finally spilling over because it instantly reminds us of the true depth of connection and history shared between two and Hiccup. It reminds us that they've spent years together, grown up together, and been through so much. And finally, last but not least, the ultimate blow that sends our tears finally spilling over if they haven't been already, is relief. When the Light Fairy catches Hiccup, we know the villain is dead and both Hiccup and Toothless are safe. 
That fear and rising tension we were feeling eases, leaving us feeling emotionally drained and contributing to that moment when our body gives up and lets the tears fall. But it was also a fairly quick scene. I didn't have the chance to have tears truly streaming down my face the way they did with the coming scenes, just because everything happened so quickly. But they got me by the end, because this scene literally leads directly into the next one, which is the real goodbye. So right off the bat, this scene has some added power because the last scene we discussed happens right before this one, so the audience doesn't have a chance to recover. Also, let's not forget this incredibly clever little bit that happened right before the climax, where Hiccup starts to say goodbye and we're preparing for the worst, but then the light fury shows up and we get a dose of joy and relief that lasts only a handful of seconds before the story cleverly drags us straight into the climax. They made us let our guard down by having a less intense almost goodbye. For some people in the audience, this can even be viewed as reassurance that there won't be a goodbye type ending because why would they show their cards so early? This can in turn massively ramp up the tension because it makes them fear for an ending involving death. The second possibility here is that people don't take security from this scene and remain suspicious, but even so, they now have a nagging tension. The seed of a goodbye scene has been planted and will be quietly growing as they watch the climax unfold. And so we already have a solid foundation for this scene, and it only gets better from there. The scene starts off with a happy moment to give stark contrast to the sadness to come. Hiccup lies down on Toothless's level as he wakes up. He pets his nose and says, What's up, bud? A deep reminder of how close the two are. This is a moment of relief and joy. Hiccup's sacrifice was worth it. Toothless is alive and well. Then we get a dose of tension and feels as Hiccup tells the Light Fury, he's all yours. Showing that he's able to step back and let go, but also giving us a very clear view of where this scene is headed. An interesting thing about scenes that make us cry is they don't have to come as a surprise. Tears can flow during scenes we saw coming all along. If anything, seeing them coming adds to the tension which contributes to our breaking point. Next, we get some heart-wrenching dialogue. Hiccup says, I was so busy fighting for a world I wanted, I didn't think about what you needed. It's time, bud. You've looked after us for long enough. Time to look after yourself. This is a very powerful line, and it also drives home the overall theme of the movie, which is learning to fly on their own, learning to rely less on each other, and ultimately, learning to live without each other. This is also a form of sacrifice. Hiccup is giving up what he wants because he knows it's what Toothless and the other dragons need. And as if that dialogue wasn't enough, we're immediately hit with the very visual depiction of the consequences of this on a wider scale. The camera switches over to the other Vikings and we're dealt multiple little tension building blows as the focus shifts between different people taking the saddle from their dragon and saying heartfelt goodbyes, all culminating in a high focus on Astrid and Stormfly, where Astrid's tears and goodbye deal a particularly hard blow. This is then chased by some more dialogue. Go on, bud. You'll be safe there. Safer than you could ever be with me. This dialogue has an added layer of emotional complexity too because it introduces unfairness to the situation. Our world doesn't deserve you yet. This reminds us that the two groups are suffering despite how much progress they made building a world together, not because of their own mistakes, but because the rest of the world hasn't learned to accept dragons yet. And then we have the hug, a moment where we're overwhelmed by the clear connection between Toothless and Hiccup. This hug is also a humanizing moment for Toothless, not only because he stands on two feet, but also because he initiates the hug and pulls Hiccup in. This also cements the idea that they stand on even ground, which helps balance the sacrifice between the shoulders of the two of them. And then this one bit right here. This, you just gestured to all of me. No, look, it was this last tiny section that truly broke me. The parallel. Parallels are such a strong tool to be used in emotional scenes to bring out the tears, and although a lot of people didn't notice what they did here in this tiny little section, I sure as hell did, and it broke me. The very last touch between Hiccup and Toothless is a direct parallel to the very first touch, the nose boop. But this time, it's in reverse, where Hiccup turns his head away at the end when he pulls back. 
I don't have access to the exact clip of this moment because again, they don't really release spoilery clips. But I watched this movie twice and I am pretty sure I noticed the tiny hesitation in Toothless pulling back. As we saw in the first movie where he hesitated and pushing forward, the same thing but in reverse. This single sequence has no dialogue, it's little more than a few seconds, and for me, this is what caused the tears to finally streak down my face because it instantly hit me with how far they've truly come together. It's a direct side by side of the start of their journey together and what we in this moment have to assume is the end. It condenses years of history across three entire movies into one moment and I just... Ah! <laughs> That was the perfect punctuation on that overly emotional scene. And then of course we get the dragons all flying away, which is of course still emotional, but what truly broke me was again this parallel between their first touch and their last touch. The way the two scenes were so closely mirrored, but slightly reversed. Never underestimate the power of a good parallel. For a reference to happier times, both to show contrast, but also to show the history between characters. And that brings us straight into the final scene, which is the epilogue. Now, the screenwriter of How to Train Your Dragon 3, Dean DeBlois, is a sneaky man. The real goodbye was made more powerful to me by the fake goodbye. He uses the same concept to make the ending of the final epilogue scene more powerful by leading us to think it might not come. First off, the wedding gets our emotions started because weddings are notorious for making people cry. And even those normally immune will generally feel at least a little joy given our connection to the characters. But there's more. We know there's been a clear passage of time because of the snow. And then they tie the knot and walk out onto the cliff where they'd said goodbye to the dragons. And they look off into the clouds. And I don't know about you, but everything about this moment led me to believe that the dragons, or at least Toothless, would show up. But then, nothing happened. So already we have the emotional sadness of Toothless not being there, and now we add the fear that they might actually never see each other again. Ah! Don't worry, bud. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. I promise. This is the epilogue after all. You can't have an epilogue to an epilogue. Except you can. Toothless! No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm glad to see you too, bud. You really had me worried there. Because then we make another jump forward in time, and we see Hiccup with his children and Astrid, and they're sailing on a ship. So now we add another layer of emotion to the stack, both clear passage of time, but also the hope that Hiccup and Toothless will get to see each other again, even if it's just one more time. And then Toothless emerges from the mist, but this scene isn't done getting complex, because Hiccup has a massive beard, and it's been years. Toothless doesn't recognize him. And we as an audience don't know if maybe Toothless has become more wild in their time apart. We don't know what's happened to him over all these years. So we get this tense moment where Toothless challenges Hiccup, stepping forward, no sign of warmth. And then Hiccup puts out his hand. We get yet another small parallel to their first meeting, and as soon as Toothless smells him, his eyes dilate and everything the epilogue was building towards, all the anxiety, the hope, culminates in this beautiful moment of bliss when Toothless falls all over Hiccup in a clear display of love. And then as if we weren't already drowning in tears, we then see Hiccup's children meet Toothless with the same nose boop that started it all. And again, there's another added layer of feeling here in the knowledge that Toothless missed such a large and now integral piece of Hiccup's life. And likewise, Hiccup missed the very same thing with Toothless. 
There's a feeling of loss in knowing the experiences they could have shared but weren't able to, and them each having children gives yet another mirror between them. Their stories have often been mirrored, so this gives us an ending that shows us the continued similarities between their life paths. And then we get a flying sequence of pure joy where Hiccup flies with each of his kids onto the list. And there's an underlying sadness because now as the audience, we don't know if this is the last time or if they'll be able to visit more. And that's sort of left up to us to determine. And it's this icing of hope and joy on the cake of feels that dooms us to trying to dry our faces before the credits roll and our movie companions see our crying face. But of course, they have to leave us with their signature speech from Hiccup. This time talking of the legend of dragons, and how most think they died off or never even existed. This both implies that to this very day, in our time, dragons could exist. Wow. Even night furies? <laughs> Especially night furies. Safe within the hidden world because humans never got to the point where they could be trusted. So that people and dragons will fight no more. Wow. Again, pulling on the unfairness, and this time across a huge piece of time. But it also gives us the reassurance that despite being apart, both groups did continue to fly on their own and thrive. And there's the tiniest implication here that the line, some still know where it is, maybe means that Hiccup was able to continue visiting Toothless after all. There were dragons when I was a boy. Where they went, only a few know. Our story changed the world forever. It's you and me, bud. Always. guys well that was it for this video thank you so much for watching as you know that was a kind of different format from my normal so let me know in the comments down below or by liking this video if this is something you'd like to see more of in the future it's not something I can do all the time because I just finished editing most of it and I put like 30 hours into it so definitely not an every week type of video but maybe once a month kind of thing whoa you are feisty as you purr you're purring and you're feisty let me know in a comment down below, have you seen How to Train Your Dragon 3? And if so, did you cry? And if so, did you cry at the same parts I cried at? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. If you're interested in new adult dystopian books, Aletheia is still available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. I have fur all over my face. I can feel it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.